good morning. Today's reading is taken from the very beginning of the first book of Samuel, and it tells of the birth of Samuel. There was a certain man from Ramathaim, a Zuthite, from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Hannah, and the other Peninnah. Peninnah had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife, Peninnah, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, and the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once, when they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow, saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life, and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk, and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, May your servant find favour in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning they arose and worshipped before the Lord, and then went back to their home in Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. Last week, we heard about the birth of Samson. This week, it's the birth of Samuel. His father, Elkanah, had two wives, the childless Hannah and the fertile Peninnah. That's just mentioned without comment, so clearly it wasn't unusual. And the wives didn't get on. That's hardly surprising. Imagine if your husband or wife brought another partner to live in the house with you. It's not exactly a recipe for domestic harmony, is it? And of course, the wife who could have children belittled the one who couldn't. This has all the classic hallmarks of a soap opera. Elkanah loved Hannah very much, despite her not being able to have children. According to the Jewish writer Lillian Klein, because the reader's sympathies are directed towards the childless Hannah, Peninnah comes across as a malicious woman. 
In fact, she's probably a literary convention, a foil for the independence and goodness of Hannah, and should be regarded as such. Eventually, in answer to her desperate prayer, Hannah's womb was opened, and she bore Samuel, and later another three sons and two daughters. After the birth of Samuel, Peninnah is not mentioned again, so perhaps Lillian Klein was right. She's just a literary device. Hannah conceived quite naturally, so in that sense there is nothing miraculous here, but it is portrayed very much as an answer to prayer. On the Sunday before last, in his homily, Father David recalled an army chaplain saying that soldiers are under fire. In that case, no one is an atheist. When the chips are down, we get on our knees. I could go on at length about the ways in which God answers our prayers, or sometimes doesn't seem to, and why is that? But I want to focus on Hannah's very simple prayer. It's not a fancy prayer. It comes straight from the heart. Sometimes we're tempted to bargain with God in our prayers. If you will just do this one thing for me, I promise I'll be very good. Yes, Hannah promises that her child will become a Nazarite on, with his hair uh, not cut, dedicated to God, but to me, that's just Hannah being grateful. So let's reflect on Hannah's simple and honest prayer as a model for our own intercessions. We pray in confidence today, just like Hannah did, Lord, safe in the knowledge that you listen to us and know what is best for us. Amen. And now a prayer for all the Cookham churches that appeared in the July Parish magazine. God of love, we pray for our churches where your love has been known for many years. We pray that we will welcome everyone in Jesus' name and that as your love pours in, it will overflow to our neighbours. May each person come to know that they are loved by you and to love you in return. May all grow in faith as we learn and pray together and may our faith be seen in action. Amen. And now we bring all our prayers together in the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Stay safe. I'll see you next Monday. And remember, Richard Simmons will lead our prayers on Friday. We also have a Zoom Bible study on Wednesdays and a Zoom evening prayer on Thursdays. <laughs>